It's the time again for a package from China. Welcome to the Wicked Gamer Run Collector! Welcome back to the YouTube channel. So, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell. But, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about this TV game 8001. I did a talking video about it a while back and I'm pretty damn curious what are we going to get. There's nothing much, there's nothing special with the box, so uh, yeah, we're going to start with the unboxing. Alright, let's see what comes inside. Um, Alright, some Theraphone. Quality is Theraphone. Ooh, alright. We have in two controllers with this. And they are more like USB PlayStation controllers. Oh. Not bad at all. Oh, chemical plastic. And power supply. Hmm. Alright. HDMI cable, a very long one. Another controller. And this compartment. Ooh. We're having the system itself. Alright, this is going to be a challenge to getting it out. It's freaking stuck in this thing. Wait, yeah, I've got it, I've got it. And this is where we're going to get people. I have never seen something like this before. Alright, let's do a little bit of an overview and a close up view. So if you take a close look at the main board and the design itself, I have never seen it before. I read it all in the Message from the Future video. I must say, if you look at the design, they I think they laser printed it and I really like it. So the case itself, the acrylic case, it is totally custom. I personally, so far I know, I have never seen it before, just like the mainboard, so this full device is custom made. So if you take a close look at the sticker here at the back, we can see this thing is made in 2019 or in this year making this video. So this is a brand new product. Alright, let's take a close look at the connectors of the TV game box. Here we're having the power end, pretty weird choice because all the yeah, Raspberry Pi so far I know having a micro USB, we're having here HDMI, audio out, we're having three USB ports and we're having here an Ethernet port. So they added this little cooling element here and we're having a small fan, this is going to sound like a vacuum cleaner, I know for sure. And we have the GPO port and that is still over here. So I am not really familiar with a lot of these spy systems, so if ET Prime is watching, I call to you ET Prime. The Master of Pi. Do you know this main board? And if you do, let me know. So we're going to do a little bit of a ripping it apart and maybe we can find some extra information beneath this little vacuum cleaner fan. Alright, let's take it apart. Alright. We need to take it all apart because at the bottom we are finding the screws for the fan. So we can do a closer look on the main board, maybe we can find some more information. All right, let's see, turn it around before we go into. My screwdriver is not the right measurement, but it does the trick. All right. So as you can see here, they are using this SanDisk card, 32 gigabytes. So for this part, I'm going to grab myself a bigger screwdriver. Ah uh, yes, they have been attached with some parkers and not just regular screws. All right, that's number one. Uh, 
Okay. So what this basically does is this is you have to be shitting with me. There's a ventilator that is on this. This is there's nothing. There's no cooling element. It's just a little fan that is blowing air to the cooling element here. All right. That is some pretty damn weird stuff. Is this very tight on? Yeah, I think it's glued on or something like that. Yeah, this is glued on. But again, if you look at the cooling element, it looks even if you look at it, some little bit of residue here. So I'm guessing this is a unique PCB board that they have designed in China itself. It's a little bit of a bummer that they didn't use a bigger heatsink or two or three smaller heatsinks. No. It's a bit of a bummer. So that was a little bit of this overview. If you have more information, please let me know. Leave it in the comments. I really love to know um, about the PCB board because I think it is pretty damn weird or unique, how you want to call it. All right, let's put it back to the guy there and uh, yeah, let's play some games again. All right. So this is what we're going to get when powering off the system. I just wanted to show you before I'm going to start playing some video games. And it's based on Retro Orange Pie. Number four. So, all right, let's reboot it. There was no on and off switch on this thing, so just a little bit of a bummer. Gamebox. Oh, it's talking to me. It's having, saying TV game box. All right. Retro Orange Pie number four. All right, let's see what we're going to get. Wow. Hmm. I must say I like the layout of this thing. Oh, the reason I'm not using it on my capture device is pretty damn simple. Um, my Elgato doesn't recognize the signal at all. So it's a little bit weird, but it needs to be full HD, but... So there are a lot of systems on this thing. Pre-installed. Very naughty. Pressing start. Ropey 4. So this is what we're going to get. All right, let's play some games and let's check out how it's how it's even working. All right, let's try some NES. Oh, I'm guessing I need to find my buttons. Oh, here it is. Oh yeah. Come on. Come on, bring it down. Go away. So NES seems to be running just fine. Now let's try some PC Engine. I've never played this game before. So I basically need to collect all the items or what? Alright, let's try a little bit of PlayStation. I must say the controls doesn't play like the original one or the original PlayStation controls, but they, but overall, not bad at all. Ow, there goes my perfect.
So let's try a little bit of Super NES. <laughs> Whoa. So, um, I don't think it's working perfectly. Oh, stop glitching. Oh my god, I played this game so much on the Game Boy. I love it. Come on. What? I hit the bastard. Alright, let's try some Game Boy Advance. Street Rage 2 on a Mega Drive. So as you can see here, uh, this game runs perfectly. A lot of clone systems, a lot of portable systems have a problem with this game. But it seems to be working on the uh, Orange Pie, basically. Or the Game TV, what you want to call it. Perfect sound. Oh, perfect. Nintendo 64! Looks pretty nice on this LCD screen. A little stuttering here and there, little flame drops, just a little bit, but. They messed up the controls. Yeah, they messed it up. D pad is working, analog stick not working. Right. A little bit of new geo, let's see how it's emulating. Oh, no glitches. Because I've noticed a lot of glitches in the past. Alright, let's see how the controls are playing. Alright. Whoa. Hmm. The D-pad is not perfect for fighting games. No, not at all. Let's test out Street Fighter 3. So big shit that the D-pad is horrible. So f this is what we're going to get people. The TV game box is basically, I think, in custom Orange Pie based system. It's most of a, let's say the most of the part of the thing is pre-built. So what you see is what you're going to get. Yeah, things like N64 doesn't work very nice and my control was not even working. So I need to remap everything. So is it 100% perfect and can you use it plug and play? No. I must say they use this cooling fan, it's like a vacuum cleaner, but uh, more like a small vacuum cleaner. But what can you do with the TV game box? I think you can basically do two things. First, you're going to use it like a console, like a retro gaming emulation station. Um, and you're going to play some old school retro games, a lot of stuff is just working fine. Or you just maybe build it in your arcade machine. That is also a possibility. So let me know what you think of this. I really love to know. And uh, 
Don't forget, like, subscribe, and hit the little bell because you get notified for upcoming videos. And uh, see you next time. Next video. More wicked, wicked content. Hmm. And if you're into gaming, check out the Wicked Gaming channel.